Hello viewers, welcome to K-Diagnostics, Dio here. Today we have a 2007 Ford F650 with a 5.9 liter. The customer complaint on this vehicle is the transmission does not upshift. The customer also stated that sometimes this truck doesn't start. So sometimes it becomes a no crank, no start condition. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go inside the truck and confirm the customer's complaint. I have to note that to get this truck started, when the truck was outside, I couldn't start it with the key, so I had to jump the starter relay to get this truck to start. So I was already able to confirm the no crank condition when the truck was outside. The customer also stated that the check engine light remains on while the engine is running, and the check transmission light also remains on while the engine is running. The customer told me that they had tried fixing this problem. They replaced the transmission. They replaced the Allison transmission. This is a medium duty truck, so it has an Allison transmission on it. They replaced the Allison transmission. The issue was still there. They replaced the transmission control module and the issue was still there. Now, the customer saw one of my videos on YouTube as they were trying to find someone who could fix this truck they came across one of my video and they reached out to me. We exchanged via emails and the customer, the owner of the truck decided to bring his truck over here so I can look at it. And this truck came from Richmond, Virginia. So I want to give a shout out to Raul. Raul, thank you for bringing business to us and thank you for bringing your truck to us so we can look at it. So now that we have talked about what's going on with this truck, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go inside the truck and confirm the customer's complaint. After confirming the customer's complaint, then we're gonna talk about what directions we're gonna go so we can fix whatever that's causing this truck to not start and not upshift once it starts, okay? So this truck over here has a couple issues and we have to get to the bottom of this problem, okay? So now let's go inside the vehicle and confirm the customer's complaint and then I will show you all the components that they had replaced in attempt to fixing this truck. So now let's go inside the vehicle. So I don't know if I mentioned this already. This is a tow truck and this truck came all the way from Virginia. Okay, so our friend Raul, we appreciate you for trusting us with your truck. So it's a tow truck right there, Virginia truck parts. Okay, so let's go inside the truck. We're gonna confirm the customer's complaint. I'm gonna grab the key and we're gonna try to start it. So the key is on. So right there, check engine light illuminates and the check transmission light illuminates and the ABS light illuminates also. So now I'm gonna turn the key to the start position. So I'm turning the key right now. As you can see, the truck does not start. Okay, so the truck is in park. But when I crank it, when I go to the start position, nothing happens so right there okay so customers complaint confirmed so we have confirmed the first problem so right there it doesn't start so to get it started we have to go under the hood and jump the starter relay so we're gonna leave the key on so now let's go under the hood he actually has a little screwdriver here that he was using to jump the starter relay. So let's go under the hood and do that. So key is on, we can start it with the key. So we're gonna have to come over here under the hood. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump the terminals on this relay. Okay, so with the key being on on the dash, 
If I jump these two terminals, this truck should start. So right there, as you can hear, the truck is now running. So we had to jump these two terminals under the hood on the starter relay to get this truck to start, okay? So now let's close the hood. So now let's go back in the truck and see what we got. All right, so right here, and as you can see, the check engine light remained on and the check transmission light also remained on, okay? So service engine soon and check trans, check trans light remained on and the ABS light remained on also. Now, I believe that this check transmission light that's on is what's causing this truck to not start when you try to start it with the key because I believe there's something going on with the transmission or the transmission control module which is not telling the other modules what speed the transmission is in. So if the engine computer doesn't know that the transmission is in park, your truck may not start, okay? Because the, the engine computer might think that the truck is in in gear okay if the transmission control unit is not telling the other modules what position it's in it may not start with the key okay I'm pretty sure that's what's causing this truck to not start with the key so as you can see we don't have any other lights on on the dash besides the check engine light and the check transmission light and the ABS light so now we're gonna take this for a spin and see how it drives once you start the truck from under the hood it actually drives so so right now the truck is in reverse we still have our lights on on the dash This truck is really taking forever to pull. Now, right there, as you can see, we're driving. Let me slow down a little. So right there, our check engine light is on, our check transmission light is on, and the ABS light is on also, okay? So, let's keep driving. So there is definitely something wrong with this transmission because it feels really weird. This thing is not even upshifting. Right there, we still have our lights on on the dash. Alright guys, so we are back here at the shop, as you guys can see, 
our lights are still on okay so the the uh, check transmission light is on the check engine light is still on and the ABS light is on as well okay so we have confirmed the customers complaint this truck doesn't start with the key you have to go under the hood and jump the starter relay and once you get it started it doesn't upshift okay it feels like it's in second gear lockout mode okay it doesn't upshift once you get this thing started so something is wrong so now I'm gonna turn off the engine so let's try to start it again with the key let's see if it's gonna start as you can see no luck okay so it doesn't start with the key all right so now the next thing is gonna be connecting the scan tool to the truck so we can scan the transmission control unit and the engine control unit to see what kind of trouble codes we have in memory after we retrieve the trouble codes then we will talk about what directions we're gonna go so we can fix this truck so now I'm gonna bring up our scan tool so we can get it connected to the truck so since this is a medium-duty truck we're gonna use our Texa scan tool okay so we're gonna use our diesel laptop scanner so our DLC is right over here so we're gonna connect this right there all right so now let's go to our laptop now let's turn the key on first so the key is on so now let's go to the laptop we're gonna use our diesel laptop I actually haven't used this computer in a while so let's see what we got so we're gonna scan this truck so this is a medium duty truck so we're gonna go to medium duty and this is a Ford so we're gonna go to Ford and this is a F650 so we're gonna click on that and this has a Cummings engine on it so we're gonna click on Cummings and we're gonna do a systems scan okay this is gonna scan all the modules on the truck so we're gonna give the scan to a couple seconds to scan all the modules on the truck right now here on the left side of the screen we have three boxes we have two red ones and one yellow one with a triangle and an exclamation point on it and the red ones have X marks on them now these red ones tell me that they are either not communicating with the scan tool or they don't exist on the truck so I know this truck should have ABS okay but the ABS module box is red so we are either have a faulty module or a module that's not being powered or a module that's not communicating with the scan tool and same thing with the transmission control module okay the automatic transmission module is red so this means that this module over here is either not communicating or it's defective okay or it's not receiving powers and grounds and this will cause the second gear lockout problem that we have on this vehicle okay and when you have a transmission control unit that's not communicating the transmission light will remain on so this is what's causing the check transmission light to remain on on the dash now I'm gonna try to click on the transmission module as you can see it says the control unit did not respond okay so we can't talk to the transmission control unit now this diesel injection is the engine computer okay now when you see a box with a triangle and an exclamation point and if that box is yellow that means that control module has trouble codes in it so now we're gonna go to the engine computer we're gonna double click on this diesel injection so that's gonna take us into the engine computer now this one is a Cummings like I said and it's the J19 
39 core so we're gonna click on J1939 now we are not here to check the engine computer but I'm gonna scan the engine computer to see if we have any trouble codes in the engine computer that says something about the transmission control module okay maybe a communication fault code so let's see what we got in the engine computer so right over here these are the trouble codes that we have in the engine computer the red triangle means this is an active code so this is a code that's occurring as we speak so we have two active codes and the other ones are memory code so when you see a yellow triangle that's a memory code okay so the first trouble code says coolant level sensor circuit voltage below minimum threshold or short circuit to ground okay so it looks like something is wrong with either the coolant level sensor or the circuit of the coolant level sensor and then the second code is the automatic EGR valve position calibration procedure failed out of calibration so it looks like the EGR uh, position valve is not calibrated and then it looks like this this code over here this memory code is also this first trouble code over here so it's in a memory and it's also active and it's also the same thing over here all right now we don't have any trouble code about the TCM so no trouble code is telling us that there's something wrong with the transmission control module we don't have any communication trouble codes over here in the ECM so now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna back out and let's try to communicate with the transmission control module again and if we cannot communicate with the transmission control module the next step I'm gonna make will be going to the transmission control module and checking our powers and grounds okay just like any computer before a computer can run and talk it has to be powered okay so that's the first thing we're gonna check we're gonna go to it to the transmission control unit and check our powers and grounds so as you can see automatic transmission it's read out so let's double click on that so now I'm trying to communicate with the transmission control unit so right there it says the control unit did not respond so the transmission control unit is not responding again like I said when you have a control unit that does not respond the problem could be a defective control unit itself or a problem in the wiring I mean the power wire or the ground wire because if we don't have ground going to this control unit it's not gonna talk okay if we don't have power going to it it's not gonna respond either okay so now what I need to do is I'm going to pull up a wiring diagram of this transmission control unit. We're going to see which wires are our power wires and which wire are our ground wires. And after that, we're going to go to the transmission control unit and check our powers and grounds. If we have powers and grounds at the transmission control unit, then the next step will be checking our communication lines. Okay, we're going to check our communication wires to make sure that the transmission control unit is receiving communication from the other modules and the transmission control unit is also talking to the other modules because you can have a transmission control unit that's getting power and ground but not able to communicate with the other modules because you can have a CAN bus wire open and cause this problem okay now the other test we could do is we can go to the data link connector and find our communication pins and do a resistance measurement of the network to see what's the resistance of the network. A good network should have 60 ohms. If we have 120 ohms, that would tell me that one of the parallel resistors is open and that can lead us towards a defective module. But I'm not gonna go that route. I'm gonna check my powers and grounds at the transmission control unit first okay so I'm gonna print out the transmission control unit wiring diagram and then I'll bring you guys back up so we can know which wires are the ground wires and the power wires that we're gonna test okay I will do that and then I'll bring you guys back up so before I show you the wiring diagram 
I wanted to show you all the components that were replaced on this truck first, okay? So, in attempt to fixing this truck, they had replaced the transmission control module and the vehicle interface module, okay? So this is the transmission control module. So this module was replaced with a used one and this vehicle interface module also was replaced, okay? So after replacing these modules, the vehicle was still not fixed. Now, I'm pretty sure these modules are good, but I wanted to show you what they had done already, okay? So the control modules had been replaced and the problem was still there. So this tells me that we're most likely not dealing with a defective transmission control module. Now let's go under the truck. I'm gonna show you the transmission they had installed because the owner told me that they even replaced the transmission. They got a transmission out of a used truck and they told me that that transmission was running well, okay? It was good. They installed it on this truck and the truck was still not fixed. Let's go under the truck really quickly. I'm gonna show you the transmission they had installed and then we will go to the bench and look at our wiring diagram after we look at the wiring diagram, then we will talk about what directions we're gonna go so we can figure out what's going on with this truck. So now let's go under the truck. So we are here under the truck. So this is the transmission. It's an Allison transmission. So I was told that this transmission was replaced, but the problem wasn't fixed, okay? I hope this transmission is good, but since our transmission control module is not communicating so that's what we're gonna go after first okay so now let's go to our wiring diagram and look at the wiring diagram so we can know what are our ground wires and our power wires so now let's go to the wiring diagram so here is the wiring diagram of the transmission so this over here is our transmission control module this over here is the transmission itself and over here is the vehicle interface module now we're going to focus on the transmission control module here first so what i'm looking for is power wires and ground wires okay so we're going to start up here so over here pin one it says auxiliary range inhibit and then this third pin is sensor return so this looks like a sensor ground now we're gonna keep going down the line until we see a wire that says system voltage or supply voltage so it looks like I see one over here that says supply voltage so pin 10 it's a red wire supply voltage so if we follow this wire we will see that it has a splice over here and if we follow it up, it goes to a fuse next to the battery, okay? And it's a 10 amp fuse. So that's good to know. We have one power supply wire over here at pin 10. So we're gonna check this wire. Now let's keep going down the line. So what I'm looking for is power wires and ground wires. So nothing else, okay? So I'm not worried about these inputs and outputs. Right now, I'm just worried about my power wires and ground wires. So it looks like this transmission control unit only has one power supply wire. And I don't see a ground supply wire over here. So when you don't see a ground supply wire to a control unit, it means the control unit is grounded on the case of it. Okay, so the case of the control unit itself is grounded. That's why we don't have a ground wire over here because you need power and ground for a control unit to work. Okay, now since we only have one power supply wire, that will be pretty easy. We're gonna go straight to this pin 10 and check this wire, okay? We have to make sure that there's power at pin 10. So let's go check this power supply wire first and see what we find. So now let's go under the truck and check our power supply wire at the transmission control unit. So we are here under the truck 
and the transmission control unit lives up here. Okay, so this big harness that you see, this big wiring harness goes to the transmission control unit. So we're gonna have to remove this big plate over here. Okay, so all this is the transmission control unit support. Okay, so we're gonna have to undo those bolts up there so we can get this plate down and do our test at the transmission control unit. I hope this harness is gonna be long enough because if it's long enough, we can just lower the transmission control unit down here and then we will do our test at the electrical connector of the transmission control unit. So I'm gonna get this plate or this transmission control unit support detached from the chassis and then I'll bring it down here. I'm gonna get the connector covers off and after that I'll bring you guys back up so we can check our power wire at the transmission control unit, okay? So now I'm gonna do that and then I'll bring you guys back up. So I got this transmission control unit support bracket off the frame. So luckily this harness over here is long enough. So I just set it over here on the floor. So our harness is going up there to the transmission and up to the front of the vehicle. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna check our power wire at the transmission control unit. These connectors were covered. I got the covers off camera just to speed up the process. I did undo the covers that were covering this connector. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna disconnect this electrical connector from the transmission control unit and find pin 10 because that's the wire we're gonna test, okay? So pin 10 is gonna be our power supply wire and it's a red wire. So we're gonna disconnect this. All right, so here comes our connector. Now, if we look closely here, I don't know if the camera will be able to pick it up. This connector has numbers on it. Okay, as you can see, we got numbers there. So over here we have 20. So number one should be on this side of the connector. Okay, so. So right here we have one and then down we have 21 and then 41 and 61 so we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so 10 should be this one and as you can see it's red okay so that's 10 right there let me put it right over here that's number 10 so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use my back probing tool and back probe this wire. So right there, so I'm back probing this red wire over here, okay, which is supposed to be number 10. Okay, now this wire is coming from a fuse that's next to the battery. I have my test light here. I have a test light connected to ground. If there's power on that wire, once I touch this back probing tool, the test light should light. So let's test our test light first because I'm using jumper wires, okay, coming from the batteries. So I have my jumper cables over here connected to the battery. So that's the ground of the test light. If we touch power here, the test light should light. As you can see, the test light is lit. So now let's test for power at this red wire. If there is power at the red wire, when the test light touches this back probing tool, the test light should light. So let's see what we got. So right there, as you can see, the test light doesn't light. Okay, so this over here is our problem. We do not have power on the power supply wire 
to the transmission control unit. So this TCM is not being powered. Okay. Now I'm not sure if the key has to be on because this wire gets power from a fuse next to the battery. So I don't know if the key should be on, but I'm going to go inside the truck and turn the key on. Then we're going to come back, check that back probing tool to see if we will now have power at this wire with the key on. So now let's go inside the truck and turn on the key. All right, so we're going to turn the key on. So key is on. Now let's go back to the transmission control unit. So I turned on the key inside the truck. So now let's see if we have power at this wire. My test light is still connected to ground. So right there, my test light doesn't light. Okay, let's double check our test light again. So right there, test light lights. When we back probe this red wire, nothing happens. Okay, so we don't have power at this wire. So with the key on or with the key off, there is no power there. Let me bring up our wiring diagram here so we can look at this one more time. So basically we are checking this wire over here. I hope you guys can see this. So pin 10 is what we are checking, okay? And if you follow this wire, it goes to this splice and then it goes up to this fuse over here, okay? So we are missing power at pin 10, okay? And we are supposed to have power there. Now, since we are missing power over here at pin 10, our problem can be the fuse. We can have an open fuse or we could have an open in the wiring between the fuse and the transmission control module, okay? So our problem is between the fuse and the module itself. If we have an open in the wiring, we will have the symptom we're having right now because if you have an open here, you will not have voltage at the transmission control unit. Or it could just be as simple as an open fuse, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by checking this fuse first. Okay, let's check the fuse. Let's see what it says. So it says in line fuse, okay, and it's next to the battery. I know next to the battery there are two fuses there. So let's go there and check the fuses next to the battery. If the fuse is good, then the problem is gonna be the wiring between the fuse and the transmission control unit. So now let's check this fuse first. So our batteries are down over here under this step. So as I'm looking over here, I see two fuse housings over here. There's this one and then this one. So these are the only fuses that I see by the battery. So let me remove this cap so we can test these fuses over here. So this is a 10 amp fuse. As you can see, that fuse looks good. Okay, so I'm gonna grab a test light and test that fuse. So my test light is connected to ground. So we have power on one side of the fuse. Let's check the other side. So we have power on both sides of the fuse. So there's power here and there's power here. Okay, so this fuse is good. Now let's check the other one and these are the only two fuses that we have at the battery so the next one is a 30 amp fuse so this is not our fuse because on the wiring diagram it said that the fuse that supplies power to the transmission control unit is a 10 amp fuse so it's this one but let's check this one just in case maybe someone had replaced this fuse with a 30 amp one so right now this fuse there's power on this side of the fuse and there's power on the other side of the fuse so this fuse is good there's power on both sides so our fuses are good guys our fuses are good i'm gonna reinstall these fuse caps over here and then we will go back to the transmission control unit and do more tests.
so I have reinstalled our fuse caps so we're good to go so now let's go back to the transmission control unit so we are back here at the transmission control unit here is our wiring diagram so we checked this fuse over here this fuse is good but since we don't have power over here at the transmission control unit our problem is in the wiring okay there's an open in this wire so now what I'm going to do is since this is the only power supply wire to the transmission control module I'm going to bypass this wire okay so I'm gonna since we still have a uh, pin 10 back probed so we still have that red wire over there back probed so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect a jumper wire to this back probing tool and connect it to my power wire this power alligator clamp over here that comes from the battery we're gonna send power straight to this wire to see if we will be able to communicate with the transmission control unit after I bypass this power wire if we can communicate with the transmission control unit that will tell me that the control unit is good and it will be a confirmation that our problem is the wire okay our problem is the open between this fuse and the control unit okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna reconnect this transmission control unit so right now I'm gonna bypass that power supply wire with these jumper wires over here so I'm gonna connect this jumper wire to this back probing tool I'm gonna reconnect the connector okay so let's see if by jumping this wire here let's see if our transmission control unit will now communicate now I'm pretty sure this transmission control unit is grounded through the case of it since we disconnected we disconnected this plate over here from the truck what I'm going to do is I'm gonna connect this clamp over here on this bracket okay just to give it ground okay now what we're gonna do is we're gonna send power to this transmission control unit okay using using this jumper wire okay so now our transmission control unit is reconnected the key is on inside the truck we haven't given it power yet now let's go inside the truck and try to start the truck without giving the transmission control unit power first let's see if it's gonna start I'm pretty sure it won't let's go check first and then we will come back and bypass that wire with our jumper wire and see if anything is gonna change so let's go to the truck first so right now the transmission control unit is connected but we're missing power on pin 10 okay so if I turn the key off and if I turn the key back on and I'm trying to start it it's not starting okay okay so now I'm going to turn the key off let's try to start it again nothing is happening so we're gonna leave the key off so now let's go to the transmission control unit and send power to that pin that's missing power okay let's send power to pin 10 okay that power supply wire that's supposed to have power what I'm gonna do I have power over here let's just double check that with our test light let's make sure we have power here so right there we have power because these two jumper wires are coming from the battery okay so now I'm going to use these jumper wires 
and send power to the transmission control unit. So we got power here now. Let's make sure we have power over here. We got power here. Okay, we have power at this back probing tool over here at the transmission control unit. Now, if we could look at the wiring diagram again, so basically what we did was we are bypassing this wire over here. Okay, so this pin over here. Oops, so pin 10, okay? This wire that says supply voltage, we are bypassing this entire wire, okay? We are bypassing this wire with this jumper wire over here that we have installed, okay? So now let's go inside the truck and turn the key on and see if there will be any changes after we have given the transmission control unit power. So back in the truck, now let's turn the key on, so key is on, bingo. So right off the bat, I can already see that the transmission control, uh, the transmission light is off, okay, the check transmission light went off, but before the check transmission light was remaining on. So now, if the transmission control unit is now communicating, we should be able to start the truck with the key now. So let's see. So right there. Perfect. It's fixed. <laughs> it's fixed guys. Broken power supply wire. So there's an open in that power supply wire. And I'm pretty sure right now, if we go to the scan tool, we should be able to communicate with the transmission control unit. Okay. So right now, as you can see, the check transmission light is off. We only have two lights on now, the check engine light and the ABS light. And the check engine light is because of the, the fluid level sensor and the EGR that's out of calibration, okay? Remember before we could not start this truck with the key, but now I can start it with the key. Okay, so it's off. Let's try to start it again with the key. Okay. So right there, guys, the check transmission light is off. So now I'm gonna turn off the truck. Okay. Now we can now start the truck with the key. The truck starts with the key and the check transmission light is off. We only have two lights on on the dash right now. Okay. Now, let's do an experiment. We're gonna duplicate the Ford. So I'm gonna turn off the truck. Let's go back under the truck and disconnect that jumper wire that we have connected between power and the power wire of the transmission control unit. So now I'm going to disconnect this jumper wire because we are sending power to the transmission control unit with this wire over here. So I'm gonna disconnect this. So now let's go back to the truck and see what happens. So we're back in the truck. Key is on. Our transmission control module light is on. So our check transmission light is on. Now let's try to start it. Now it won't crank. Now it's a no crank, no start. Okay. So now the truck won't crank. Okay, so we have duplicated the fault. Now I'm trying to crank it. Okay. It doesn't crank and our check transmission light remained on. So now let's go back under the truck and send power to the transmission control module again with this jumper wire. Okay, so 
we send power there we have power over here so let's go back to the truck and this time since we're sending power to the transmission control module we should be able to start the truck with the key so watch this key on okay check transmission light goes away there's your problem lady so we have found the problem we're missing power to the transmission control module okay so it wasn't starting before because the transmission control module wasn't talking so the engine computer could not know what gear the transmission was on so that's why the engine computer wouldn't allow the driver to start the truck with the key because the transmission could be in gear and if you try to start it in gear you can run over someone or you can cause a lot of damage okay so this is why it wasn't starting now that the transmission control unit can communicate as you guys saw the truck now starts so I'm gonna turn the engine off I'm gonna turn the key on so now let's go to the scan tool and see if we're gonna be able to communicate with the transmission control unit back here at the scan tool so we're gonna do a system scan again let's see if now we will be able to talk to the transmission control module I'm sorry for the beeping sound in the background so right there what do you guys see I see a change guys I see a change let's move away from the truck because it's making too much noise so right here guess what now we can talk to the transmission control unit remember before we had a red box over here on the transmission control unit but now we have a yellow box with a triangle and exclamation point just like on the engine computer so this tells me that we have some trouble codes in the transmission control unit and as you can see the scan tool is now recognizing the transmission control unit is recognizing the type of transmission that this truck has as you can see it says automatic transmission Allison generation 3-4 okay so let's double click on that now we're gonna enter into the transmission control unit let's see what kind of trouble codes we have in the transmission control unit we got some memory codes torque converter clutch system TCM power input signal okay yeah this is the input that the transmission control unit was missing okay it was missing this power input so there was no power going to the transmission control unit okay so I'm pretty sure the transmission control unit set this trouble code before it died before it started not receiving power maybe it was losing power intermittently first before the power was cut off completely okay so we're good to go we don't have any active codes in the transmission control unit let's scroll down a little bit more right there no active codes now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna erase all these trouble codes and then we're gonna go back to the truck so we can talk about how we're gonna fix that wire that's missing power I'm gonna look around the harness to see if we can find where the open is which is gonna be fun to do you see how these trouble codes all went green so this is good this is how this is what I want to see okay this tells me that all our trouble codes are fixed okay there are no longer active and there are no longer in memory okay so what we want to see is these green triangles over here so this is good so right now we need to fix that wire we're gonna go down the wiring harness and check the uh, wiring to see if we're gonna find that open easily if we can't find the open I'm gonna have to run another other wire okay I can run a power wire to pin 10 and that should fix this problem okay so now let's go to the engine let's go to the engine computer I want to erase the codes out of the engine computer also and uh, the calibration of the EGR I'm pretty sure we can do it with this scan tool let's go to 
activations let's see if we can do the calibration uh, no these are just by directional test let's go to settings so let's scroll down and see what we got okay well it looks like we cannot do the EGR calibration because if the scan tool would allow me to do that I was going to do that okay so we have this active code over here about the coolant level sensor circuit so we can take a look at that maybe later on but right now this is not what we are focusing on okay I'm gonna erase these trouble codes I'm pretty sure that coolant level circuit code will come back yeah as you can see it came back so we can take a look at that afterwards but right now let's go under the truck and look around the wiring harness hopefully we're gonna see where the open is in that power supply wire if we can't see the open then we're gonna to have to run another wire and send power to it so we can power the transmission control unit and after we do that this vehicle will be fixed okay so now let's go back under the truck so we are done we're good to go I'm gonna turn the key off okay uh, let's turn off the key let's disconnect this scan tool interface now let's go back under the truck and look at the wiring harness hopefully we can find where the open is on that wire if we can't find the open we're gonna to have to uh, we're gonna to have to run another wire to the TCM